Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's nice to be here in person. And today I want to talk about an incredible innovation to feed the planet in the future. Uh, and that innovation is something that's actually existed for thousands of years, and it's the soils. It's the millions of microorganisms that live in our soils, that feed them, that recycle them, that regenerate them. Um, and we are only now realizing, as we farmers, um, co corporates, companies, communities, realizing that uh, these soils are actually an incredible potential to feed the planet. Uh, at the moment when we consider that about 29% of the soils around the world are degraded because of the way we are currently producing our food. So what we need to do um, is to set up a new way of exploiting the soils. We need a new, partnerships, uh, a new partnership with the soils, with nature, in order to grow our food. And uh, this can be taught as a sort of revolution for the way we are going to produce food in the future. And that, well, that's what is called regenerative agriculture, and that's what we work on at Pure Projet. So, regenerative agriculture is a way of regenerating nature instead of exploiting it. It's about changing the way we see it as somewhere where we extract resources, rather seeing it as a place that where we put resources that we use as a resource. Um, it has several benefits. Uh, the first one, of course, is to improve the health of our soils, and I'm going to dig into why this is so important at the moment when we have a global population, a growing population to feed in the world, as well as the challenge of climate change. Um, it allows us to tackle this issue of climate change by sequestering carbon, uh, meaning it's taking carbon from the atmosphere, where it's a problem, and putting it below ground, uh, putting it where it's actually a benefit. So it's about changing the balance it's uh, about increasing biodiversity. It's about increasing the number of animals, the variety of species that we find at the farm level. Um, it's about creating, reinforcing that biodiversity where we know uh, that it's, it creates resilience. At the farm level, it creates resilience for nature, it creates resilience for communities. And it is about protecting our waterways. It is about protecting our water resources. Um, about keeping the nutrients in the soil, so in a similar fashion to what it does with carbon, rather than washing them away into rivers where they become a problem. So that's what we need to do with regenerative agriculture. And before we go into what it actually is in terms of practices, I want to take a bit of time to, re to reflect about why, how we got to this level, why are we at this, you know, at this observation that 29% of the soils around the world are considered degraded, and, and what does that tell us? Uh, especially knowing that it's better for the planet and it's better for humans. So how did we end up here? Um, the reality is that we've always looked at soils and the ecosystems that depend on these soils uh, as a medium to grow crops. Uh, we've never thought about them as a resource. So they're basically a medium to which nutrients attach. So we put uh, fertilizer, we put anything we need in them. Uh, and then the roots of the crops that we need to, to grow in order to feed ourselves uh, attach to those nutrients and, and grow. Uh, the consequence of this thought, which, was, you know, which started since the 40s, let's say, with intensive agriculture uh, to feed a growing population, uh, and that's actually created incredible yields in terms of food production, is um, that we have been taught to combat, to compete with the soils, uh, rather than partnering with them. Uh, so what do we do? We have a problem, we have a pest, let's put pesticides. Uh, we have a weed that we don't know how to manage, let's put a herbicide. The soil is not fertile enough, there's not enough nitrogen in the soil, let's dump nitrogen in the soil. We've always seen it as a sort of a receiving end, um, and that's led us to a place where it's not sustainable anymore. Uh, currently our food system uh, occupies about 50% of habitable land uh, across the world. Um, it consumes about 70% 70, 70 of our water resources. Um, it's responsible for about 70% of biodiversity loss. It's absolutely huge. It accounts, according to calculations, to between 20 and 40% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And in short, it's, it's an unsustainable system uh, that's not going to allow us to be fed and to feed a growing population in the future. Um, so we need to move away from that with regenerative agriculture. And the good thing, uh, well, at Pure Projet, we work with communities, we work with farmers that have already started implementing those practices, and hope was actually there even before uh, Pure Projet existed. Um, there's, uh, for instance, in, in Canada, in the Canadian prairies, 
uh, farmers started uh, implementing a key regenerative agriculture practice, which is not tilling the soil, for instance, uh, as early as in the 90s, or in the US and Canada, some states are starting to pay farmers uh, for implementing those practices. So the balance is changing. There's a, a different discourse, a different speech that is uh, happening. Uh, in a way, this revolution has already started. Um, we work at Pure Projet with uh, more than 50,000 farmers around the world, that working with them to implement those practices, to make them relevant to their context, uh, especially working on agroforestry, which is that way of planting trees at the farm level uh, in order to leverage the benefits of the trees. Um, and what is really key here is that farmers are at the heart of these solutions. Uh, those practices cannot happen without the farmers, uh, and they are really the force that can drive the evolution of our food system towards uh, a more sustainable future. Uh, the other element, we work with brands, we work with corporates that need to engage with those farmers uh, in their supply chains. So brands are taking commitments to regenerate the ecosystem that they depend upon. And that's a key element of our approach where we work with corporates working in their supply chains rather than outside, which is an approach called insetting as opposed to offsetting, where you will mitigate your you know, negative impact on the environment within your activities, along your supply chain, and especially on your food supply chain, working a lot in the food and beverage sector, rather than outside. This is a key element, uh, and it's, it's a key force, we believe, uh, behind this regenerative uh, revolution. Now, let's go back a little bit to understand what regenerative agriculture is. When we're talking about these practices, what exactly do we mean? Uh, there's a variety of practices. If you take a farm, a traditional farm, bare with uh, bare, lead bare, or with uh, rows of wheat or corn neatly arranged one after the other, um, regenerative agriculture in introduces more mess. It introduces more complexity, more diversity. Uh, with rotational, uh, rotational crops, so diverse crop rotation uh, that allows for a more balanced nutrient uptake at the level of the farm, uh, and it allows for below ground biodiversity to increase as well. Um, another element is integrating animals into farming, uh, a key practice called silvopastoralism, for instance, um, uh, marries, let's say, pastoralism with forestry, and it allows to manage weeds in alleyways, for instance, uh, it allows to recycle nutrients, but it also adds manure, so it adds fertilizer to the soil. Um, another key element is cover crops, instead of leaving the, the, the earth bare for fallow. Um, introducing multi-species cover crops add nitrogen to the soil. It allows to protect the soil from erosion, uh, and it provides habitat for insects, for pollinators. It brings back that biodiversity that we've lost. Um, introducing windbreaks, uh, and a key element in those windbreaks is planting trees, agroforestry, uh, that reduce erosion, trap the snow uh, in colder climates, uh, improves water retention, uh, and supports on farm biodiversity in general. And finally, a key element, of course, is introducing manure and compost to reduce the use of synthetic fertilizers, uh, possibly to replace them when it's possible. Uh, and it adds incredible amounts of uh, organic matter to the soil. So that's really about regenerating the soil, that key element. Um, No-tilling is, uh, is also like one of the you know, most important practices is not tilling, so leaving the soil undisturbed before planting weeds, plant before planting crops. That allows the soil to rebuild its structure, its nutrients, uh, and tillage can also be replaced by animals um, in, some, um, in some aspects. So if you look at this, this is actually a much more complex, a much more diverse way of looking at how a farm works. Um, and it can look like a daunting task, but what we do as Pure Projet is to take it by steps. Uh, so step by step, we analyze what farmers need and integrate those practices, um, plan them on the long term. Um, that, of course, doesn't come without challenges. So there are incredible challenges uh, to, tra to the transition um, on this. So the first one is, having to change the equipment. So from a very mechanized industry to no-tilling, for instance, that can require uh, buying adapted equipment that can cost up to $20,000. Um, there's a key element, which is technical training, which is sometimes hard to come by, uh, depending on the countries, and um, knowing which practices are adapted to the farm uh, and how to integrate them without losing too much for the farmer uh, is a key element that is currently missing. 
Uh, that includes higher risks for the farmer. One key thing is that farmers that engage in those practices are taking risks uh, on behalf of the planet because they're taking the risk of introducing new weeds, new pests that they don't know how to manage. Uh, and those risks are not rewarded at the moment. And one thing that is absolutely key is the social acceptance of these practices as well. And it just highlights how rooted in our psyche, in our cultures, agriculture is. There's one example of a, a, a farmer in Canada that we support, for instance, that after starting to implement those practices, didn't want to go to church anymore because everyone would tell him, his neighbors would tell him, look, your fields are dirty, they're, they're disorganized, there's weeds everywhere, what are you doing? So he just stopped going to church altogether uh, so as to be not to be laughed at. Um, those farmers are taking really very tremendous risks that can affect their livelihoods, uh, and their work is not rewarded enough by the market at the moment. So that's where we believe we have a, 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 um, somewhere where we can bridge the gap at Pure Projet. Uh, we want to bring uh, corporates, companies, innovators uh, close to these regenerative agriculture practices. Um, one example, for instance, we manage a regenerative fund for um, a large uh, American brand um, that focuses on uh, implementing those practices with farmers within its supply chain uh, in Italy, in uh, Chile, in North America. Um, so we work with them, we select applicants uh, with whom we're going to implement those projects, we foster experience sharing with them, we conduct baseline data in order to design a proper project. Each farmer will have different needs and you know, all, not all regenerative practices apply to all farmers and all contexts. So we, could, can, we collect that baseline data and we, we define KPIs to measure the impact of, of our mission, of our initiative. Uh, we support the farmers with a roadmap to an or a certified standard, the regenerative organic certified standard. And finally, in general, we support those farmers, those communities with uh, technical implementation all along the course uh, of the project, tracking KPIs, etc. There are roadblocks altogether still. Uh, we need be to be better at outcome measurement. We need to be better at really measuring the impact of no-tilling, of cover crops, etc. Uh, we need better science on the economics of regenerative agriculture. Some key metrics are still missing. How much fertilizers do you save? How much do you save on fertilizers if you implement uh, cover crops? Exactly, what, what, how does it benefit the, the farmer economically, as this is a key risk that he's taking, and how does it benefit the company within its supply chain? Um, and we also need to be better at treating underlying causes. Uh, so not focusing on the symptoms, uh, which could be, you know, not this pest or this weed that happens on the farm, but better understanding why those symptoms appear. Is it because there's no more predatory insects? Are we missing pollinators? All this requires more companies, more corporates, more investors um, to fill the gap. And if we achieve this, if we, you know, if we're able to increase our capacity to have and prove impact, um, then in the future, when you drive along a farm, uh, you, won't any, you won't see any more either bare land or you know, neatly arranged rows of wheat, of corn. What you will see is forests, is food coming from forests with the diversity of animals, uh, with life, um, with trees. Uh, that's really what we believe is a dream for the future of food production that can feed uh, billions of people in the future. Um, and as a conclusion, you know, as individuals, we need to be better at connecting with nature. We need to be better at understanding you know, how to cooperate with nature uh, for, our, for our purposes rather than competing with it, rather than combating it. And I would say as um, corporates, as investors, as companies, we really need to engage in that revolution that's coming uh, in the world of food production. Uh, in short, we basically need to bring nature uh, back into agriculture for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.